الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسكم من سيئات اعمالكم من يهدي له فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحد وخلق منها زوجها وبث رجلا كثيرا من النساء واتقوا الله تسالون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يت الا رسول الله فاذن عظيما ان الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعل المسلمين اليوم today is a beautiful day for muslims everywhere this is yawm al-juma this is the day which on friday we know allah did many beautiful and wonderful things the creation of adam our grandfather and a day reserved for the muslims in the past there was the saturday which was reserved for the yahudi to celebrate their worship to allah then it became sunday for the christians later and now for us alhamdulillah we have yawm al-juma in this day so many opportunities for us to be forgiven even coming for juma salah is forgiveness from allah it is said that when the muslim is coming for each juma all the sins in between are forgiven from one juma to the next some muslims try to take advantage of that and said well doesn't matter what i do in between as long as i make it for juma if i come for juma okay maybe they don't want to do salah maybe they don't fast maybe they don't take care of their islam they said it's okay i'll go for juma allah forgive everything i know what's wrong with this idea He would have to ask Allah. You know, after Juma, you could make a du'a. Maybe Allah is going to accept it. Huh? His du'a should be, "Oh Allah, kill me, kill me now, just in case I don't make it to the next Juma." You follow that? So Allah forgive you. How do you know you're going to live to that next Juma? So we don't play a game, not with Allah. We ask Allah always to accept from us and forgive us. Don't play games. In today's Juma khutbah, I thought it would be important for us to talk about another game that we play. We human beings, all human beings play this game. So don't say oh it's not us Muslims or maybe it's only Christians or Jews or Hindus. No, every human being plays this game. I'm familiar with this game. It's called the blame game. Heard of this blame game? And I'm from Texas. So in Texas, we call it the blame gun. Yeah, the blame gun. This is when you pull it out. It's your fault. I'm late for Juma today. Your fault. Blame gun. It's your fault. 
that the keys are locked in the car and the motor running, we can't get in, maybe it's raining, huh? Blame, 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 blame. By using this blame gun, we think to make ourselves look better or give ourselves an excuse for why we didn't do what we wanted to do. Islam is not accepting this game. This is another game not acceptable in Islam. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about shirk. What is shirk? It's a very dangerous thing. Shirk is something that Allah does not forgive. Chapter 4, verse 48 in the Quran, you can read it for yourself. Very scary. Allah said He does not forgive shirk. Clear statement. He begins the ayah. I do not forgive shirk. That's it. But anything else he said he could forgive, but not that. The ulama have divided up the kinds of shirk so that we can better understand shirk al-akbar, clearly associating partners with Allah, denying Allah, or turning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in the big, big shirk al-akbar. Shirk al-azgar is not so obvious but it's still shirk, so it's still no good. And that's when people say, well, I believe in Allah, but I want to pray through something or do something to get to Allah with my dua, my devotion. And they may pray to some righteous person who may have died. They might even pray to Jesus. They might even pray to Moses or to Muhammad wasallam. This is not acceptable. Because it's shirk. It makes a partner with Allah. But there's another kind of shirk. Shirk al kafi Have you heard about this? When the Prophet ﷺ wanted to explain this to his companions, he said, what about a black ant on a black rock, on a black night. Could you see it? No. And this is another kind of shock. This hidden shirt includes the blame gun. Because the blame gun, when you point it at somebody and you say, because of you, this thing happened. It's your fault because you did this. It's his fault, her fault, their fault. But never my fault, right? Because we want to blame. If you would just have pulled the keys from the car, we wouldn't be standing in the rain. If you had just got in the car sooner, we could have made it to Juma on time. If you, you see what you're saying? See what you're saying? You're saying that things could have been different if it hadn't been for the action of others. But really, could they? Don't we believe in six pillars in Islam? Do we believe in six pillars of Islam? Do we or no? We believe in Allah. And what about the Qadr to Allah? Don't we believe that Allah has full control? Yes or no? Don't we believe that Allah is al Qadir? Yes or no? Don't we believe that Allah already knows everything that's going to happen? al alim Yes or no? Don't we believe that everything is already written? Yes or no? Because if you don't accept this, that's one of the six pillars needed to be a Muslim. You don't have number six? <laughs> one through five is not going to help you. If you don't have number one, four through six is not going to help you. Two through uh, four, all the, it doesn't matter. Six, and this is the sixth pillar, which is to believe in the predestination, the Qadr of Allah. 
What happened, happened. It's not that you can say somebody's fault that it happened, it happened. What they did is between them and Allah, and what you do is between you and Allah. Sometimes people do things that are bad and they must be punished. They cannot say, oh, I couldn't help it, Allah made me do it. Because we know that when somebody does something intentionally, that's their intention, and they'll be rewarded for that intention, true or false, or punished for it, true or false. So what do you really have? Put away the blame gun, put it away, and find out what do you really have. You have minutes. You have a cell phone has minutes. You have so many minutes on this earth and they're going to run out. They'll be gone. The only thing is you can't recharge it. It's gone. Oh yeah, and what else? There's nothing to tell you when your minutes are going to be up. Could be just like that. Finished. No minutes. Then what? You're dead. It happens to people every day. Somebody's alive today, they're not going to be alive tomorrow. South Africa yesterday was a head-on train collision. 300 people, more than 300, were injured. Some died. Yesterday in Turkey, a 6.0 earthquake has been misreported on some of the Western news as 5.8. By the way, I follow earthquakes, so it was a 6.0 in Turkey, Western Turkey. We still don't know how many casualties we had. But yesterday morning when they woke up, they were just like you, thought they were going to live forever. I just got word yesterday a friend of mine in Boston was killed in a car wreck. We don't know how long we're going to live. But for sure, whatever Allah wrote, that's what's going to happen. Whatever Allah caused to be written is going to happen. So we don't need to blame people. We need to get over it and move on. What should be the statement that I make when something happens that I don't like? What should be my words? What should come from my mouth when I don't like something just happened? What should I do? Well, let me give you a clue. It's the exact same words that should come from my mouth if I'm happy. If I'm pleased and happy with my situation and somebody asks me, Yahi, Kevalik. What should I say? Alhamdulillah. So if there's any difficulty, Alhamdulillah. It's all from Allah. And whoever is patient in Salah, this is the successful one with Allah. So when we find ourselves in this position, we begin to reach for the blame gun, wait, could stop, to pray to Raqqa, Raqqatain, Nafl, make dua, be patient. And Allah said, in Surah Al-Asr, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Wal-Asr, Inna Al-Insana La Fi Khusr, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ أَمْنُوا وَعَمِّلُوا صَلَحَتِّ وَتَوَسَّوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَسَّوْا بِالْسَبْرِ Allah tells us that He swears. Allah is swearing by the time. And nobody knows how much time they have. Allah is swearing by this time. that all of the creation of the human beings that he made, la fi khusr. What is khusr? This is 
the inability to pay your debts, bankruptcy, broke, no money, people standing in line to get money from you, you don't have any money. People want to be paid, you can't pay. On Yama Hisab, the person is unable to take care of his debts that he owes to Allah and to Allah's creation. He's broke. He's going to go where? And you already know. The worst of the worst outcomes. Alhamdulillah for the word illa. Illa, except for those who come to the full iman in Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah. What the one so? Well, first of all, we don't want to forget the good deeds, do we? And they do the amal salihat. So it's not just enough to say, I believe in Allah, is it? Is it? I believe in Allah. But I still need to do salah. I still need to fast Ramadan. I still need to pay charity. I still need to make hajj. I still have to be good to my neighbors. I still have to be good even to the people I don't even know them. And especially my family, my mother. I have to take care of these people, yes or no? So there's a lot of Amus Salihah involved. And now we come to what the Wasso Bilhaq. And this is to encourage each other to this good deed. All of this, which is called Islam. And to encourage each other to be patient, persevering, and steadfast. Sabah. Sabah. Put away the gun. Put away the blaming. Have peace in your heart through this sabr, through this beautiful patience with Allah. May Allah grant that to all of us. I mean, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sabi ajma'in. فَإِنَا إِسْتَقَوْ حِدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهُ وَخَيْرُ الْحَدِيَ هَدِيَ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ وَأَشْرُوا الْمُورِ مُتَتَاتِهَا وَكُلُّ مُتَتَاتٍ بِدْعَى وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ دَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ دَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّوْمِ When we talk about sabr, often we just mean to be patient. Usually, we think of it as being quiet for a couple minutes maximum. You know, like I'm waiting for a traffic light. And I'm going to be like, oh, man, I'm in a hurry, I'm in a hurry. <sighs> it finally turned. Was that really patient? But I think I'm patient now, right? Or somebody's talking and I want to interrupt him because he's saying something wrong. And I want to tell him, no, 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 no. It's like this. Before he's even through talking. But I don't interrupt him, so I consider myself patient, right? Yeah, I must be patient. But what is real sabr? Sabr is when you take your child to the doctor because something's wrong. And you find out that the child has a disease. Something maybe they don't even have a cure for. Now what? Now what will you do? Sabr is when somebody very close to you suddenly dies. Sabr is when people are attacking you and you're totally innocent. Yet you don't have a chance to voice your side of the story. And what do you do? Sabr is following what Islam teaches us in all our conditions. Not just when you're having a good time. Weddings, yay! Baby is born, yay! Have a good time, huh? Even at the time of death, it's inappropriate for people to wail and scream and carry on. It's not acceptable in Islam. You can cry. The Prophet Sallallahu cried when his son, Ibrahim, passed away in his arms. Yes or no? He cried. And the people said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, 
even you said everybody has their time of grief. It's okay. But you don't pull your hair out, jerk off your clothes and start screaming in the streets. Because this is a kind of what? Sure. What? Yes. Because it means you don't accept what Allah has written. Everything is written by Allah. It couldn't have been any different than what it is. Be patient. Follow Islam. Allah will show you a real victory if you're patient. These words are coming from a person who needs to hear them more than you do. I also, maybe more than anybody here, have to learn that lesson of being patient, of having sex. In the 20 years that I've been a Muslim, I've seen a lot of things happen. From the very first time I went to a Juma, a Juma Salah, filled up, very similar to what we have here today, filled up. And I had no clue what they were saying. First Juma, I was only a Muslim from Tuesday to Friday. The Imam came in. He started talking Arabic. Of course, you have to. Inna alhamdulillah. Like this way. It scared us. Myself and a Catholic priest just made shahada. We're sitting there like... And we were told, you can't talk. I looked at him. He looked at me. We didn't say anything. We just listened. This man... Oh my God. But he translated it. He said all the praise to Allah. So what? It's translate? Yeah, it seems nice now. Then he start again. We think maybe he's gonna tell him, you know, we need to take over America or something. <laughs> we were very afraid that he'll mean make you laugh in Juma. Just can you imagine? But we had to learn to be patient. Be patient. And this was the lesson came to us in the very beginning from our teacher. He said, be patient, be patient, be patient. You will be tested, you will be tested, you will be tested. This is guaranteed. At the end of the Salah, we stood up to pray. Now nobody had ever really shown us how to pray. We were told how to pray by our leader because when the one who gave us shahada prayed, we had to pray behind him so he didn't see our mistakes. We didn't know anything, really. We just thought we were following him. So when we lined up, the Catholic priest who was now Muslim, he leaned over to me and he said, Yusuf, this man's touching me. I said, this guy's touching me too. So we backed up. We went back to another row. He said, this guy's touching me. I said, this guy too. So we kept going back, going back. So we got to where the guys come in real late, you know, they don't know to get close. And we prayed with them. SubhanAllah. We didn't know that's part of the Salah, to be close. You have to do that. You must touch your shoulders to each other when you pray. This is a commandment from Rasul Sallallahu We didn't know. But where did the real patience come in? We thought we were being tested. Uh-uh, not yet. After the salam alaikum, salam alaikum, immediately one of the brothers, he ran to the microphone in a suit and he said, These people, they are munafikin, those guys right there, they are trying to steal our masjid. This is our masjid, we built this masjid. And then another one, he came with his own microphone, his own amplifier in the back. These are the people stealing the masjid from us, we own this masjid. No, we are. I said, oh my God. Shouting, microphones, in a place of worship. If you ever went in a church, you know this never happened. When you walk in a church, like a library. That's it. Not like when we come in here shouting, screaming at people. And no. So the Catholic priest, now Muslim, looked at me and said, "Yusuf, what do you think?" said, we must be in the right place. 
He said, why do you say that? I said, because probably they never did that before, and probably they're never doing it again. Just Shaitan is trying to get us afraid, so we will leave out and leave this group and leave Islam. Because when a preacher and a priest and a minister and the family all come to Islam, this is too big. Shaitan can't stand that. Because we could go out and tell so many people, and we did. <laughs> and many people would come to Islam, and they did. Shaitan's not stupid. And do you know what happened? Exactly that. Within a few days, those same two brothers were hugging each other, apologizing. Sorry about that. Sorry, that's not the way to solve issues. We didn't have enough suburb. But sometimes we don't realize what our actions will do. And sometimes you don't get a chance to apologize. And sometimes people could leave Islam. There are many things that could happen. But I just want to end this khutbah reminding myself what Allah said about calling to the haqq la ilaha illallah wa tawassaw bil haqq wa tawassaw bil sabr and to always encourage each other to be steadfast and patient. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Kulabi. Jamil Muslimi. May Allah always guide us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah make us a cause for other people to see this beauty of Islam. Amin. May Allah put our feet on his straight path until the day of judgment. Amin. May Allah make us of those who have sabr. Ya Rab. Ya Rab. Give us this sabr. Amin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan. Wa fil akhirti hasan. Wa kina dabinna. Rabbana la tuzik kulu bana bada idha daytana wa hablana melanuka rahma ina kaatu wa hablana. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim ina kaatu wa hablana. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim ina kaatu. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Ikam as-salam.